Welcome to Sculpture Studios. The sun, something rarely seen in Britain these days, is what we've been asked to create for this project, and this has been commissioned by Andy Hooten from NIS Science. If you've seen our Spaceman video from a few years back, Andy approached us then and was part of that job as well, so it's great to be working with him on a new project all these years later. What we're going to be creating here are a total of three suns, one larger version at an approximate diameter of around 1.3 metres, and two smaller versions. These will be exactly the same as the first, but scaled down to around half a metre each. This is for the Sun Inn pub in Cotsmoor in Oakham, and in keeping with their pub name, they wanted a sculpture to go above the lettering on the outside wall, and two smaller versions to go either side of their new sign. There's actually quite a lot of footage for this job, believe it or not, and seeing as it's only three suns to create at first glance, there's actually more work here that goes on behind the scenes than you might think. We've sped up a lot of footage for all the laborious tasks which take a long time, so hopefully you can appreciate the amount of work and the processes needed to create something like this. We begin by scaling up the larger sun to the correct size on our polystyrene, and using our hot wire table, we're cutting the outline so we have a basic cubist form. Aidan then goes to work with wire brushes to create the desired shape, and this is what's known as a semi-relief carving. This means the job's not fully round, and it's somewhere between being completely 3D and being a flat image. This is very common amongst wall installations in particular, and it requires a certain level of expertise in getting the depth perception right. You need to create the appropriate 3D undulations and complete it successfully when working from a 2D image. Remember, anything that Aiden creates here on the larger version will need to be replicated on the smaller version later on. It's always important to follow a concept image at all times so that you don't deviate from the original design and let your mind wander to what you think the client's after. It's even more evident with this job so that both the larger and the smaller versions are uniform and they both accurately follow the same design. Carving often takes quite a bit of time, even for an experienced artist, and even on a sped up video, it's often difficult to capture a form taking shape quickly. So I thought you might appreciate this clip of a bit of carving with Aiden, showing a rare occurrence where a shape's taken quick form right in front of you. No machines, CAD cuts or programming, just a good old fashioned bit of carving with a stonemason riffler. Time for a tea break. The miniature version is created in exactly the same fashion. It's scaled up onto polystyrene, hot wire cut with the hot wire table, and then it's carved by hand. Once again, we're always referring to the concept image, and we're not simply referring to the one that's just been carved. This way a compound error doesn't occur. When we're happy with the carving, we sand the shape down to lose any excess foam beads, and we go over with a soft plaster filler. We're often asked about this product, and this is just a water-based plaster filler that you can probably buy from home construction stores, and we buy it pre-mixed in a large tub. It's probably used for filling small holes in the walls in your home or something like that, and you can simply spread the mixture on nice and thin, and you let it air dry naturally. This is then sanded down to a smoother finish, and the process is repeated both using the filler and with water-based emulsion paints. By going over with different colour paints, we can see any discrepancies in the surface or areas that need a little bit more work, and we repeat this process until we get to a smoother and smoother finish. When we're happy with the overall quality, and to make sure we retain this level of quality, we proceed to create a mould. We go over with a gel coat of resin first, to make sure the interior of the mould has a smooth finish, before backing this up with glass fibre. For both the mould and the casts, we're going to be using a general purpose resin, as all the casts are going to be situated outside, and so they don't require a more expensive fire rated resin, and the mould is going to be disposed of later anyway, so there's no point in using an expensive resin for no reason. All these factors contribute to making this whole job more cost effective for the client. He's smiling. That's all I can think of is going, oh, hello, I didn't see you there, today. Working on the sun. Here's one I made earlier. 
idiot. <laughs> On one of our previous videos, we've had someone ask why are we making a mould if, like in this case with the larger sun, we're only intending to create one cast. They'd seen a lot of our other videos, and they were asking why it simply wasn't given a blanket coat of glass fibre, like many other of our one-off jobs. Yes, mould making is an ideal route to take when you're creating multiple replicas of the same thing, but numerous casting isn't the only benefit of creating a mould. It's a logical question to ask, but the simple answer is that a mould will help retain the quality. By going over with a blanket coat of glass fibre, it would do what it says on the tin, and it would blanket over the detail. The intricacies of what's just been carved would be softened, and the detail would look spongy if glass fibre was just laid on top. By making a mould, the cast that comes out will look exactly like the master pattern. We are just about to take out the, the fiberglass from the mould using lots of screwdrivers to pick the tops open for all these things here. And just got the last shape, we're going to pop a bit of wood down. With any luck, it should come out. Beautiful. We're continually cleaning the job up through every step of the process. We obviously sand the piece down at the very start to make sure the master pattern is the correct shape and as good a finish as we can get at that point. You saw us sanding the interior of the mould down earlier, once again improving the surface. And here we're cleaning the casts up now that they're taken out of the moulds. This is always a time consuming task that people might not often appreciate, but it's a crucial step to keeping our work to a high standard. As these suns are all going to be finished in gold, we're going over with a red oxide paint here, and this will help bring out the gold colour. It might seem fitting to use a yellow base layer, but this red gives a bit more depth and a heaviness to the gold paint that's going on top. For the underside, though this will never be publicly seen from the back, we always like to present our clients with a nice clean and tidy job, so here we're adding a black paint just to smarten up the glass fibre. Wooden battens are also added in the back, so these can be fixed to the wall and to the signage. The red and gold paints that are going on top are applied to all three casts, as all the suns are going to have the same artwork. But this is still merely the undercoat layer for the final gold leaf finish that we're going on top with. Okay, what I'm doing here, I had a, a red oxide paint first, and then we've gone over with this which is a nice gold luster paint and it's water based but I know it's really really keyed well so the whole thing's good and the reason why I'm going over the red oxide is because when I go on with the gold leaf and I there's a create a little split at least there's gold underneath and it would be more forgiving and that's dried I'm going to be using this and it's called size it's a type of glue you get a water based one and an oil based one uh, and this is an oil based one because I think the longevity is a lot better for outside because it's such a hot day, I'm only concentrating on doing very systematically with like going around. And I'm saying I'm doing the quarter, and I'm very carefully with a nice brush, just getting it evenly spaced. And this will go off in about two to three hours. But today, I think it's going off. If you touch it with the back of your finger, it's just tacky and it's right to go on. This is called fake Dutch metal, and it's left, it, it's left on the back and it is a gold leaf. If you lay it very carefully onto the size, I'll show you here now. And I lay it on carefully. I'm gonna brush it very, very gently and it will only stick. It will only stick to the, uh, the bits you've glued. It doesn't matter about these little creases, like they will rub in or rub out. And if you have any spare or extra which is hanging down here, you can take it off and then you can add it on and lay it on top and brush it on again. And this brush here just takes off any little flaky excess and even if you're using real gold, say 23 karat gold, you make sure you do it on a white paper 
and any bits you flake off you can collect up it afterwards and then put it on again and brush it down. This gold leaf is called fake gold leaf. We received a sample of actual gold leaf but to keep it cost effective for the client with a relatively similar finish we're going to go with this because it brings the cost right down and, uh, and with this we can use a lacquer which will make sure it's, it's really durable for outside use. If we used it on the real gold, um, they say the real gold doesn't need a lacquer but we think being outside for so long with the weather and everything like that it should have a lacquer anyway so yeah. we might as well use this because they'll both have a similar effect. But it's a beautiful luster and by the time it's lacquered and it's seen from well it, it looks lovely now but by the time it's seen from sort of 15 or 20 foot away out in the sunlight yeah it'd be almost too bright it's like a mirror almost but i think this is better than any kind of gold paint you can see the difference is it when we gold painted this it, like this looked like a nice luster but with the gold leaf itself it's much nicer again i'll show you how that right at least the sun looks happy about it <laughs> Here we've invited our Molly down to the studio to complete the gold leaf, as she's nice and neat at this type of work. You can tell she's a regular person for us to call on, not only from looking back and seeing Molly in some of our previous videos, but you can't just walk into the studio and expect to get a caricature, you've got to work for it. Once all the gold leaf has been applied, we go over with a lacquer to seal the gold effect and to help make the finish weather resilient for outside use. We want to make sure that these look good, both from up close in order to go on the signs, and from far away so you can see everything from the main road and high up on the pub itself. We had a very happy client, and if you're ever in the vicinity of the Sun Inn pub in Cottesmore and Oakham, and you fancy getting happy yourself, pop down for a drink or two and to see some of our handiwork outside. Thank you very much to Andy Hooten once again for getting back in contact for this project, and we look forward to many more in the future. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter and for more of our work visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.